Our uh, real mission is activating potential of young people who live in marginalized communities. So we do this uh, through the partnership uh, that we do with the community schools that serves the neediest students in Kenya. We have uh, public schools that are very overcrowded, but we also have community schools. If it weren't for community school, I, for example, would not have gone to school. So because public schools are overcrowded, people in the community begin schools to meet the need uh, and the demand for children who are not going to school. So that, those are kind of the schools that we partner with. I would like to talk a bit about our students. Um, those are the students that you're going to meet today. Uh, if you're a student in Kenya who attends community schools, chances are you've already not done very well in your exams. There are also, you know, just a lot of challenges that you go through. Um, one of the challenges is school fee. Uh, so and on average, the students that you're about to meet are out of school twice every week because, you know, schools in Kenya are not, are not uh, free. So when we begin working with our schools, one of the things that we've noted is also just the low self-esteem that students have about themselves. So um, our students, when they, you know, when we meet them, first of all, you know, they've had these constant messages about the fact that they cannot achieve, the fact that they cannot do anything past, you know, the academic work. They, 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 we've also met, we also meet students who feel like they are failures. So our work really begins there. Our work begins by, we, you know, when we uh, partner with, with schools, we work with the teachers. Because when you want to work with students to change things, you have to think about the teachers and the adults that work with them. So we work with the teachers to change their mind, mind shift around what is possible for the students that they support. We also do um, a lot of, uh, you know, training and workshop to help see the teachers and the students see their potential. So self-efficacy uh, is, is, is very important. So there's a lot of work that happens. Uh, when you come to these communities, one of the things that you, you know, uh, you might see is the need. But today we are not going to talk about the need. Really, we are going to talk about the resilience of these students and what happens when we develop deep relationship with our students, when we support our students through, you know, to pursue their passion and interest, and when we have supportive adults that are there to support students to uh, pursue those passions uh, and interests that they have. Um, my biggest dream like is like when I finish um, from four that is grade 12 um, I want to go and study law I love singing like music like it just makes me go up yeah I love singing a lot I'm actually Amanda big picture learning Kenya and through them we were actually taught about project work which also made me to be like um, to do something during this COVID-19 period so I'm doing a project which is related to COVID-19 so my project is all about the elderly and COVID-19 so I have three goals for my project First goal that I had is like to learn some of the challenges that they are facing during this COVID-19 period and that I had to like go out there, do a research, conduct interviews. Um, the second th goal that I had, it was sort of like sensitizing or creating awareness to the elderly and also those people who live around them in my community so that at least they can know some of the challenges that they are actually Facing. The third goal that I had was to actually give out basic supplies that they need. After that, I'm willing like to go out there and see their progress, like what has happened after my project, anything new that they've learned and maybe how it has impacted their lives. I'm a student at PP Chalan in Kenya and uh, during this COVID-19, before it started, I decided to do a project under childhood obesity that is related to the problem that is affecting our community, that is Kangemi community. So I decided to do this project so that the parents can be aware of this problem of childhood obesity. My project is based on mental health awareness amongst the youths. 
what I'm trying to do is sensitize this information to a lot of people. Um, why I chose this project is um, I have had my own battles and still do with mental illnesses so I have that sort of point of view of how some or most of my fellow youths go through every day. My goals with my project is um, to just you know get the information out there to get more youth talking about it to also encourage them to step up and talk about whatever they are going through because um, a lot of people feel that they are sort of pressured not to you know, talk about what they're feeling either because they're afraid of what their relatives might talk to about you know, um, stigma in the community as well and not a lot of people are willing to talk about you know, mental health. So what inspired me to do this project is that um, I actually live with an elderly person, that's my dad, I'm in Kangemi, um, and he has like um, high, high blood pressure and also like lung diseases. So when you kind of try to relate to, the, to the, those two, like having those diseases and then COVID-19, it's like it becomes more chaotic. So my support team, um, first of all, I thought of those people who really know me well. So I started from the place, like I started from my own family. And then like um, some, somewhere else where I went was like the place that um, I started, that is from Big Picture Learning Kenya. I have um, a project proposal which talks all about um, how I'm going to fulfill my project. I also have um, a project timeline which talks about that time frame in which um, I aim to finish my project and maybe some of the things that I'll have to do. So you know when you're actually doing something like concerning people, you need to sort of like learn, learn about their culture, learn about their beliefs. So that one I did it through conducting interviews. I also needed to go out of my comfort zone like from those people, specialists who know like lives of the elderly people. That's like organizations or maybe doctors who know some of the things that the elderly are passing through in relation to COVID-19. So for me, I'm actually conducting a project. Then if you go to another youth and then tell him like you can make change or maybe he's like, do you have the financial funds? And then you're like, you, you can just start from where you are. So it's like something that people are not yet working on or they're not even willing because they believe uh, like you need to have that support, like financial support in order for you to do something. But I think that what they need to know is that you can just start from where you are. Like you don't have to be great to start. And then like problem solving skills. Along the way, of course, I face so many challenges. It's not everyone that is willing to help you or just directly, so you'll also face challenges. But I think that those challenges actually, um, I learned so many things from them. I learned that you need to look at them like opportunities because they're there like to, to strengthen you. So you need to come out of your comfort zone in order for you to deal with those challenges. Actually, this project has been like, it has impacted me like in many ways, like self-believe, like for now I have high self-esteem. I believe like I can solve another issue if it comes out. After getting those information, um, I'm actually, um, actually writing a handbook, which will get in the name is actually the new normal. I also have a video talking all about my project and you can also get that if you have interest. Before I started, you know, this project thing, I just kind of had this idea of knowing that yeah, there's this problem out in the in the community affecting a lot of youths, but now I understand exactly what kind of help that they need and how I can help them in you know in the way that is you know I can help them in my own best possible way. And um, another thing is that I can be self-driven because I took initiative um, to spread awareness on mental health. And yeah, and for the skills that I've learned, I can, I am a critical thinker. Well, um, I would advise my youth or even adults as well, um, if you have like a skill or go, you know, a goal in life and you like sort of like, you want to make a change or leave your mark in the world, I'd encourage you to take that chance. Go for it, you know. My advice to my fellow peers or to my fellow youth, I think that I will tell you that, um, you can make change wherever you are, no matter the place that you come from, even if it's a slum, your dreams are still valid. You can do anything for as long as you believe in yourself and you believe like you have the power because I always believe that like the power is in you and you can be able to do it. So since you have the power, since you have the skills, go out there and show the world that you can do it and there is something more to you. I have such high expectations for these students. I know that they have self-efficacy. We've worked so hard to develop their self-efficacy. 
and research shows that when you have self-efficacy, you have the recipe, the perfect recipe to succeed in life, but also career-wise. So I see them in college. I see them pursuing careers that, they have, that brings them joy, you know. I see them taking care of them, themselves mentally, but also physically. So I have such, you know, big dreams. I think uh, our students have what it takes to change the world. Thank you.